स्थापकाय स्थापकाय सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिणे अवतारवरिष्ठाय रामकृष्णाय ते असतो मद्गमय तमसो मोतिर्गमय मृत्योर्मृतंगमय शांति शांति लेट अस ऑफर अवर सेल्यूटेशन टू श्री रामकृष्ण हु केम टू एस्टैब्लिश रिलीजन ऑन द राइट ट्रैक हु केम टू इंटीग्रेट ऑल द रिलीजन्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड who became the embodiment of all the religions by his actual experience in each one of them let us pray our salutations to him let the whole humanity be united under the common principle the oneness of brahman we are all one we are all united we are all part and parcel of the same light let us pray to the divine who is the supreme light by whose light the whole universe is shining by whose light each one of us is carrying the activity let us pray to him to lead us from the unreal to the real let us pray to him to lead us from dreadful darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge let us pray to him to lead us from terrible death to immortality let us all be freed from all types of afflictions peace 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 be unto all today's topic i am speaking on patience and diligence move mountains these are all very fine noble virtues to be practiced by us especially those who are seeking spiritual knowledge to mold our character to enjoy life to the maximum extent without any obstructions on the way these qualities have to be practiced by us we should live our life while we have it 
we have got the life now it is a splendid gift given to us by the divine supreme so we must live the life in a righteous way we must get proper training and discipline to live the life discipline is life lack of discipline is no life at all we must recognize the higher principles that sustain the world and our individual life and we should learn to live in tune with them people are feverishly rushing towards external activities so much so they don't find time even to sleep when the mind is engaged in such tremendous activity outside how can you expect peace of mind how can you expect to be freed from tension and worries are we not wasting our life chasing useless things and achieving only more and more agitations and worries in the mind we should ponder over the situation each one of us is responsible already there is lot of anarchy in the whole world anarchy not only within but also to a certain extent without what is the reason for that we are just moving headlong towards only one aspect of prosperity that is material prosperity wonderful we should advance there is no doubt about it but along with meditative material advancement we must give equal importance if not more to our spiritual prosperity also how many of us are caring towards that end unless we strive for spiritual prosperity peace of mind is misnomer what we find today in spite of tremendous advancement in science and technology even we boast of our modern civilization posing ourselves as most intelligent people on this earth but there is a spiritual vacuum in spite of all these tremendous material comforts unless strengthened and purified by real spiritual life material prosperity in itself is terrible and dangerous it involves us more and more and makes us more and more agitated unhappy acharya shankara tells in one of the verses labdha vidya rajamanya tatakim prapta sampat prabhavadhya tatakim bhukta nari sundarangi tatakim yena swatma naiva sakshat krito bhut achar shankara gives here wonderful intellectual food he 
asks us to put question ourselves. You see, we may be well educated, we may have high sounding degrees, people may give lot of respect because of our high education. Tatakim means what of it or what next? You get a job, earn a lot of money, have about half a dozen big palatial houses and lead a life of luxury. But are you satisfied? What's the use of all this? You may enjoy everything in the life, yet what of that? Could you conquer the mystery of life? Could you find the nature of your own self? If not, the life has gone waste. Keyo radyair bhushito va tatakkim Kaushe yadyair avruto va tatakkim Tripto mrishtana dina va tatakkim Yena svatma naiva sakshat krito bhut You may have choice chest of foods You may enjoy to, your, to the maximum extent all various types of dishes. What next? What's the use? What's the use again of ornamenting your body with so many decorations, with so many garments, silks and other clothes of charming colors? To that person who has not realized this Atman, the indwelling, shining spirit, what's the use of having all these things? Though he might have all these things, he may be miserable if he doesn't have the Atma Gyan, the realization of the Self. Yesterday, one of the professors was asking me the question, what is consciousness? Can you explain? I said, consciousness cannot be defined, it is to be experienced. Is it possible? It is. What is the proof? Saints and sages, they have told emphatically, each one of us can realize the truth. Consciousness is not something dry. It is not nothing. It is full of bliss. Once you have the taste of that consciousness, you will never like to come down to the mundane joys of life which we find in modern days. So why not we aspire for that highest ananda, happiness? There is that happiness, why don't you strive for it? Drashtanana charu deshas tatakkim Pushtas cheshta bandhu vargas tatakkim Nashtam daridriyadi dukkan tatakkim Yena svatma naiva sakshat krito bhut You may go and see different places and enjoy beautiful landscapes, sightseeing etc. during weekends. 
But what of that? Are you satisfied with all these things? You have to question that. Unless you realize the Paramatman, you can't have real peace. Simply we will be talking all day in and day out about peace and peace and we will be peaceless. Why not we accept the facts as it is without compromise? Let us be honest in admitting the faults and try to rectify if we are serious about peacefulness. There is another verse which depicts the naked facts of life. Yet we are so foolish to learn. Really, it's a misfortune. Vyagreva tishthati jara paritar jayanti Rogascha shatravaiva praharanti deham Ayuf parisrava de binna ghata de vambaha Locustatha pehita maserati tichitram Day by day we are approaching death. The moment we are born in this world, the next moment we are approaching towards death. Our senses are getting weaker and weaker, though we may not perceive. Just as a hungry tigress which has given birth to two or three cubs will always be on the alert to leap and grab any animal. So also, is our old age. It comes to every one of us. It is an experience, that is why it comes. To learn dispassion. Old age is coming. Ever prowling to jump on us. Like serious minded and cunning enemies, Diseases and ill health are waiting, ready to attack us, when we least expect it. Each day, as we live, life is ebbing away, like water kept in an earthen pot, leaking from the numerous small holes. In spite of these stark naked facts of life, it is curious, we do not know what is good and what is right for us. Even if we know what is good, we are not prepared to practice it. Again and again, we commit mistakes. Our life being so uncertain and transitory, we should not waste it, but make use of it to achieve the goal of realization. Let us not be pessimistic, seeing the difficulties. Every difficulty should be seen as an opportunity. If we look upon difficulty this way, then we are saved from the dangers of life. So let us be optimistic taking the opportunity in every difficulty. Very important point. Herein comes the importance, practice and cultivation of patience and diligence. Remarkably patient you must be to achieve something. It is a spiritual exercise, I should say. 
So every difficulty is an opportunity to win over the grace of strength. Whatever else trouble is in the world for, it is here for this good purpose, to develop strength, to strengthen us. We should get rid of all weaknesses. We are not able to practice spiritual life. Why? Because we are weak. The moment we begin to ask, immediately they give a big list why it is not possible to live a spiritual life. Big list. So that we should say, all right, what to do? Then they expect some compromise. But if you accept compromise, then you cannot make steady progress in the spiritual life. But every moment, if you are conscious of yourself, your situation, time, etc., then you will learn. Strength is increased by encounter with the difficult. It means we should have spiritual attitude towards all happenings in our daily life. Let our all activities become spiritually oriented. Whether you are in the office, whether you are walking, whether you are meeting, talking, whatever you are doing, always have that orientation then you will be always on the right track. Patience and diligence are the two wings of a spiritual aircraft. Patience, it is a grace of God, whereby we endure evil for the love of God. We have need of patience with those who love and those who love us not. Against sudden inroads of trouble and under our daily burdens and disappointments, we have the need of patience. In the weariness of the body, in everyday wants, we have got this need of patience. Each day is a bright new day. Each morning is a fresh beginning. Each sunrise brings the message. Be renewed in body, mind and soul. How nice it is to think this way. For a renewal of life, God's grace is certainly needed. We need to cooperate with it. Let us be patient in our endeavors to achieve the goal of peace. So, looking from this point of view, life is an adventure. We are here to live the life of adventure. Life is not for weaklings. If you are weak, you are bound to suffer. If you want to get rid of suffering, you have to become strong. Spiritually strong. Not only physical strength, not only mental strength. There is super strength, that is spiritual strength. Charam jalam vari muchapibanti Tadeva kratva badhuram vamanti Santas tata dujana durvachamsi Pitwacha suktani samudgiranti. There was a great king in India by name Bhartra Hari. He has written beautiful verses under the caption, Vairagya Shatakam. 
it is available in our book stall beautiful he has composed these famous verses out of his own experience so it, it carries great value now the meaning of this verse is that the clouds suck the salt water of the ocean then what do they do they give out the same making it sweet the rain water is sweet even so the great man bears patiently the insults of the bad ones but gives in turn sweet words of wisdom there is one incident it is not simply a story there was a saint by names eknath a famous saint maharashtrian saint very humble highly devoted illumined soul he was the personification of patience always unruffled and he would always maintain his serene posture under all circumstances he would never be disturbed seeing this noble quality some people became jealous they wanted to create trouble they wanted to spoil his reputation somehow they wanted to discredit him so they hired a man to provoke this saint this poor man because he was tempted to get some big amount he accepted this menial job to somehow provoke this saint by some method the hired man was waiting for the opportunity it was the practice that every day sant eknath would go from his house to a river about 2 miles away from his house early morning just before sunrise to take bath and finish his morning ablutions do a little meditation and come back he was doing this for a long time not a day missed very regular this hired man came to know of this he was waiting on the road side the saint had just finished his bath and he was returning home this man immediately spat on him if anybody else were in the position of the saint immediately he would have given a slap but this saint didn't say anything there was no reaction at all in the face as if nothing has happened simply he returned back to the river again took bath for the second time returned again he spat second time also he didn't say anything he was as cheerful as he was went back again took bath again when when he was returning this hired man again spat on him the man was not tired nor was eknath 
the thought of the rich reward lured the man and he spat on him every time that he passed by him this went on for as many as 107 times without murmuring this saint would go and take bath return again go take bath return again go take bath return continue it so happened after having the 108th dip as the saint went at his way home this man's heart was touched upon suddenly he felt very sorry that he spat on this great man immediately he fell at his feet he dropped down and said pleaded oh mahatman forgive me i implore you to forgive me the man who had no samskaras of any type belonging to a separate religion so to say in fact the religion also is mentioned in the book he belonged to islam mahamadanism so the mahamad ya yeah, mahamad spitting on a hindu saint is very serious just so the people who wanted to insult the saint thought but saint is a saint he has no religion so when he implored the saint to forgive him saint ekanath looked at him he was very compassionate the hired man was telling oh saint i have greatly sinned i have told by some of the people of the town that if i could but make you lose your patience they would give me very high reward the temptation of a rich reward made me behave like this pray forgive me again and again he was asking sante ekanath just smiled in smile itself he was showing forgiveness in smile he was showing his sympathy for this poor man he said forgive you for what you see how the saint looks upon beautiful is a thrilling incident the saint is telling him you are asking me to forgive you forgive for what today is a unique day in my life i feel that way because you have given me the opportunity to take bath in the holy river for 108 times and to pray and meditate upon the divine lord 108 times i should be grateful to you see that man was completely transformed that is the value of patience so as i already told you patience is a spiritual quality we must practice it we must the angler who desires to catch a big fish spreads his net and waits quietly for hours together having thrown the bait and the hook into the water 
similarly a devotee should patiently follow practice his devotions his life should be continuous life of practice there is a time for everything everything happens at the correct time there is a law universal law so we should not force the time to give an example fruits are there plenty of fruits grow in the trees people who are crazy they pluck out the fruits even before they attain maturity and they somehow make it mature by artificial means and sell it but you take the natural fruit which which is matured in the tree itself how beautiful taste it has the taste is lot of difference between the artificially matured one and the naturally matured one so also here don't force the thing keep on practicing it result will come by itself we shall not worry over the result but you must take all precautions about the minutest details to practice spirituality if you want to have anything positive result you have to be very well established in this high spiritual quality patience there is a story said by swami vivekananda two men were meditating in a forest one man was deeply meditating so much he was not aware of the outside world so much so an ant hill grew over his body now it so happened one saint came across the way where this man was meditating in the forest and the other man also was meditating quite nearby the saint came across there simply he came casually he was coming so he saw the ant hill growing so much over this man who was meditating he could find out a person was sitting inside so the man also could recognize somebody passing in front of the ant hill so somehow he came to know by seeing his face that this saint must have had seen god so he asked him well o mahatman i think you are going to celestial region the saint said yes i am going then this man asked him then please ask god when he will be merciful to me when shall i attain freedom i just want to know how long i have been sitting here for meditation until has grown over me still god has not come the saint said all right i will let you know in course of time he went further after a few yards away he saw another man he was not meditating in the way in the way how the other one was doing but his way of devotion was different he was singing dancing he was in ecstatic joy shedding tears uttering the name of the lord feeling joy in that when he saw this saint 
he became happy to see him to have his holy company then he came to know he was going to high celestial region then this man also requested him to ask god when he would be freed so both of them have given the same question in a different way they were, both of them wanted to know the result when the result would come now after quite a long time the saint returned he came across first the anthill as soon as he crossed the anthill the man sitting inside immediately shouted what happened could you meet god and ask my question yes i did ask him i got the reply what did he say he was very curious to know narada the saint he replied you see the lord told me that you would attain freedom after four births you will have to take four more births then you will get liberation the man was highly disappointed he began to weep and wail what i have meditated until an anthill has grown around me and yet i have four more births to achieve my goal became so restless so impatient he was anyway the saint left him and went further then he came to the second man who also had put the question narada told him my friend do you see a tamarind tree here yes how many leaves are there we can't count innumerable yes you will have to be born so many times before you will have the darshan of the lord on hearing this this devotee who was singing and dancing he became all the more happy and joyously he was exclaiming what i am really very blessed i shall have freedom after such a short time he was remarkably patient just then a voice came my child you will have freedom this very minute that was a reward for his perseverance and patience he was ready to continue devotional practice all those births nothing discouraged him but the first one who was meditating inside the anthill felt that even four more births were too long patience is very important only patience like that of the man who was willing to wait upon aeons brings about the highest result this story has been said by swami vivekananda in complete works of vivekananda volume 1 we can see in shrimad bhagavad gita lord krishna says in chapter 13 verse number 7 that practice of kshama kshama means forbearance graha kshanti that is patience patience without intolerance that's to be cultivated such a person patiently bears all the things as one wears on the body his favorite ornaments 
Now, these are the very important points we should remember. Whatever the difficulties may come, on account of whatever reason it may be, we should not be overwhelmed by them. Our attitude should be one of glad acceptance. Whatever that comes, we should accept. It has come with a purpose. If we resign ourselves to God, we will be blessed by such situation. So, the man who practices patience bears with equanimity both honor and shame. He is the same in happiness or in sorrow and he is not affected differently by censure or by praise. He who practices such endurance will be blessed by the highest reward of peace and tranquility leading ultimately to immortality. In Srimad Valmiki Ramayana we have got a great verse where it is mentioned Kshama, the virtue of Kshama is extolled. Alankaro hinarinam Kshama tu purushasyava Dushkarantad divakshantam Tridasheshu visheshadaha Patience is the chief ornament of both men and women. Few are capable of such forbearance. It is difficult even for the devatas to manifest it. It is the greatest of gifts. Patience is truth. Kshama satyam. Patience is sacrifice. Kshama yajnascha. A man's true glory is patience. Patience is dharma. The world is supported by patience. The earth we call Bhumi, Bhu. The mother earth, how much patient she is. She is bearing the whole universe. So much about patience. Now what about diligence? This is another important spiritual quality to be practiced by us. Constant and earnest effort to accomplish what is undertaken is called diligence. We should persistently exert our body and mind till we reach the goal. Ordinarily, people spend their whole time in simply theorizing the matter rather than practice it studiously. An interesting incident happened when Swami Vivekananda was in Boston. A young man came to Swamiji and gave him a note. Very interesting incident. In the note it was written, all the wealth and happiness of the world are yours if you only know how to get them. If you come to me, I will teach you how to get them. Charge five dollars. <laughs> what do you think of this? That man asked. The man who gave the note asked. Swamiji said, my friend, why don't you get the money to print this? You have not even enough money to get this printed. That young man was infatuated with the idea that he could get immense wealth and happiness without any trouble. Without taking trouble of exerting oneself heart and soul, one cannot reach the goal of liberation. So therefore, tenacity is needed in our sadhana, 
spiritual practice. We should see that we gradually and steadily proceed along the higher path, never flagging till we reach the goal. It means our spiritual fervor is to be maintained with great care. Sometimes we may feel that both good and evil forces want to act at the same time. We will be virtually facing a terrible tug of war. Here in comes the crucial role of diligence. We must have to stop the activity of the lower desires with a great effort of the will. There must be great intensity in our thinking, feeling, willing and action. If a person can hate intensively, he can love also intensively. But intensity there must be. Our intensity gives the impulse to our thinking, feeling and willing. And this intensity can best be brought about by stimulating the soul. Feeling can be cultured, will can be strengthened, intellect can be developed all singly. But if we are to stimulate the soul, all can be strengthened at the same time. This is possible only if we are diligent. In a certain place, Swami Vivekananda engaged himself busily giving counsel to a large number of people. Many use, people used to come to him asking many questions. Swamiji untiringly gave them various types of suggestions so that they may get some peace of mind. It so happened one day an old man came to Swamiji as soon as he came in front of Swamiji, he began to pour questions after questions. Swamiji just saw him, simply kept silent. All along Swamiji was talking and giving counsel to all people who were asking questions. But when this old man came and asked, Swamiji remained silent. Next day, again the old man came. Again he showered questions on him. But Swamiji never uttered a word. As soon as he saw this old man, he would stop talking. The old man repeated his visit for two, three days. But Swamiji would never open his mouth in front of him. The old man became very annoyed. He became furious and left the place never to come again. Now afterwards, some of the people who were coming there regularly, they were watching this incident. They were puzzled. They couldn't understand why Swamiji was reluctant, why he was not answering the questions of this old man. Why he became indifferent to him when he sought the guidance to practice Vedanta. Some of them went and asked Swami Vivekananda about it. Swamiji replied, he smiled and said, My friends, what this old man can accomplish in this advanced age? He has led a fast life up to this time. I could see it. And no energy is left to undertake any practice. Is it ever possible to achieve the highest ideal without being diligent? He is just interested in mere discussion. Intellectual, theoretical discussion he is interested. That's all. But I don't want to waste my precious time in his way. I want whatever I say must have some value and must bring some positive result in the people who hear me. There is an incident in Chandogya Upanishad 
there was a boy by name Shweta Ketu. At the age of 12, the boy was sent to an ashram for studies. It was situated in a forest. Very good uh, surroundings, very peaceful. He lived there with the teacher and learned the discipline of life and he studied all the scriptures describing the knowledge of Atman. He studied all the Upanishads. He studied all the Vedas. He mastered them. At the age of 24, he became highly educated in all these Vedic scriptures and returned home. His father, Uddalaka, inspired Shvetiketu to strive for the realization of the Paramatman. Start practice. The father was telling the son, start practice. By means of remarkable parables, he explained how to arrive at the oneness of the Self. In fact, Shweta Ketu wanted some inspiration. See, people always talk about doing practice. But how can we do practice unless we are sure that there is God? How to know? We have only heard of Him. So that was creating little trouble in Shweta Ketu. Now, this incident inspired him to practice spiritual sadhana diligently. One day, Uddalaka asked his son to bring some salt and a bowl of water. Then he instructed him to keep some salt in that water and asked him to come next day. Next day he came then the father asked him to bring that quantity of salt which was placed in water the previous day. The son grasped for it but did not find it as it was completely dissolved. Then the father said, My boy, please take a sip of the water from right side. How do you feel? Oh, it is saltish. The salt is here. Then the boy was asked to sip the water from the middle and then from the left side. The boy replied that the water was saltish. Thereafter, Uddalaka said, Though the salt is not seen, it is very much in water. Verily, indeed, you do not perceive Paramatman here. Verily, it is indeed here, like this, salt and water. That which is the finest essence, this whole world has that as its soul. That is reality, that is Atman, Tattvamasi, thou art that. The boy became very happy at this illustration. He was very sharp and guileless pure hearted, pure mind, immediately he took it very seriously with great interest he began to practice the spiritual sadhanas. Now, the first essential step, Shravana, that is hearing, was ascended. Then second step, manana, was followed up. What is manana? Cogitating. Shweta Ketu began to cogitate, think over again and again and analyze the things that he had heard and convince himself about the truth. 
in this stage he intellectually grasped the truth but this alone did not give him self realization he desired intensely to subjectively realize his oneness with the all pervading unchanging reality that is brahman for this he ascended the third step which is called nididhyasan that is meditation after hearing the noble truth he began to concentrate and meditate meditated long hours to know and experience it himself lord krishna tells arjuna after giving out the whole of bhagavad gita in the end he says yatha ichha si tatha kuru i have told you the way but the knowing and realizing you have to do yourself and so do as you please is it possible to achieve this highest goal without being patient and diligent sometimes obstacles and difficulties appear to be insurmountable but infinite patience with continuous effort will ultimately work well and bring satisfactory results there is another incidents that which i would like to tell before concluding my talk there was a noble lady in bengal who was hailed as goddess of mercy she was always engaged in serving the poor the disabled and the needy she was very noble modest so these people were so much confident about her helping nature that at the say at the slightest excuse they used to run to her without any hesitation whatsoever in spite of her benevolent nature there were some people who were jealous living in her neighborhood always slandering her on many matters but this noble lady thoroughly ignored their hate campaign as if not satisfied with their mean behavior this people who are jealous about her they were dumping all sorts of garbage around the house of that noble lady every day at night she was not complaining to anyone about it but quietly cleaned it every day morning then they began to dump dead insects and creatures in her backyards she began to clean it too her young son one day asked her mother asked his mother oh mother how far are you going to tolerate this every day they are putting this garbage every day they are creating nuisance the mother replied quietly my son you are asking me how long to do this way till the enmity that is entrenched in their hearts against me gets destroyed this noble mother was the respected bhagavati devi this young son who asked the question was the great ishwar chandra vidya sagar whom shri ramakrishna had met shri ramakrishna said a story there was a poor man who would cut the wood in the forest sell them and live upon whatever he got from them one day he met a holy man in the forest who said oh my good man you can get it off your poverty go forward just like a mantra simply he said go forward he took it up he acted upon his words went deep into the forest found lots of sandalwood he became very happy he brought cart loads of sandalwood he sold them in the market got lot of money then he remembered the saint's words go forward again he went further he found silver mines he became much more rich again he remained saints words go forward he has told me go forward why should i stop still again he went much deeper into the forest then he found gold mines again he went further then he found heaps of diamonds and other precious gems he took these also and became as rich as a god of wealth himself so patience and diligence 
move mountains enable us to reach the highest goal of peace and supreme happiness thank you all tuesday i am taking minor upanishad amrita bindu upanishad for the sake of the participants to read the sanskrit easily we have made transliteration of this upanishad those of you interested in the subject may take those copies from swami sarveshananda ji we have got uh, karma yoga class every saturday we wish more and more people to participate in this noble service it is an opportunity also to have a get together so that we all work under common ideal it is good at least if you could come saturday and spend some time with us all the 18 chapters have been recorded and they are available in our book stall and vedic chanting class also is being held every sunday morning at 10:15 though you may feel little difficult to follow sanskrit yet it would be good if you could learn some of the sanskrit passages important to our life transliteration is available with little difficulty you can easily learn the things i hope you can attend that program also thank you om asato ma sadgamaya tamaso ma jyotirgamaya mrityor ma mrutangamaya O oh God, lead us from unreal to real. Lead us from darkness to light. Lead us from death to immortality. Peace, peace, peace be unto all.